Greetings fellow Demon Slayers, this is Time and Amari here today with another video. For today's topic, I just want to give like general news and advice. Um, so for starters, speaking of news, I did take a few hours a day to just kind of romp around the web and see if I could find any sort of news pertaining to this game. Unfortunately, like I'm still coming up really dry with any like release information for our version. I did find a channel, I believe it's called Taimen and TV on YouTube. Unfortunately, the channel is 100% in Japanese. While I do understand like the gist of it, I'm not like 100% fluent to even provide information from the channel. Like I can say that like the other day I did see them covering the Halloween skins, but I neglected to report that to you guys because I, you know, it's easy to just assume that it's only going to be for the Japanese version. Like, I know they had the skins that we got, plus a Mummy Emily skin. And Emily's basically a character we will get later that will be playable. So because Emily was included, I was just like, okay, maybe this is for Japan only. And I didn't expect to get the skins here for Yuki, Asagi, and Sakura. Luckily, they did share the love, and we have those skins now. But again, it's just really hard to take news from that channel and give it to you guys because of the language barrier. As I'm not 100% fluent, like I can understand it for my own purposes, but to give you guys like the information, I need to be 100% accurate, and I don't want to give you any misinformation as regard in regarding news, especially. Also, um, as far as what we have on our side, we had we do have an action time and in Facebook page. They've been really hush hush about news, like with every update we've gotten so far. Um, all the news I've been able to pretty much find out about it when you guys do after the weekly update. So they've been really hush-hush about actually giving us any details of what's coming before it's actually here in our faces. But I do check that, that, you, that Facebook page, you know, often just to see if there's anything up. It's just unfortunately, there isn't much being posted there as far as news to get everyone hyped and, you know, things to look forward to. Now, as far as what is there currently, there was a like campaign. Um, it was basically do 3,000 likes on the page and we'll get 50 gems. We did already reach that goal. And then they did a kind of a run back and said if you get to 3,500 likes, you will get an additional 50 gems. We did also reach that goal. I'm sure you guys may have noticed that like earlier in the week and I believe yesterday we got 50 gems. So that's a total of 100. The only news I have to report is that on that post, it said something along the lines of let's try for 5,000. So I'm assuming if they get to 5,000 likes, we'll get maybe more gems or some other reward that they'll be giving out. So for anyone who hasn't liked the page, just go do so and let's see if we can hit that reward and get it done. But besides that, there's really no other news to report. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into the video. As far as the Golden Pass, uh, yesterday it was pointed out to me that we will not have this here monthly if we follow Japan's trends. Uh, they said something along the lines of Japan hasn't had a pass for months in some scenarios. So don't expect the Golden Pass to always be here. I do apologize. I assume that it would always be here because most games in the West, when there's something like a Battle Pass, it's just there every month. Like, there's always a new one coming in. It's usually like... It's kind of replaced the subscription model over here in the West, so to speak. So I just assumed Action Time and then would do a pass monthly and kind of follow the same trend. But apparently these will not always be here. So as far as like yesterday's advice, that further reinforces what I stated. Because these items here will become much more coveted. Since you can't even expect to get a random one per month or two if you did pay for the pass. So... Going back to yesterday's advice, please take the time and just upgrade your crafting facility to level 4. Like, I know some people may not like crafting or not want to deal with it. I know, like, you probably just want to log on and kill stuff and get rewards and then go about your day. But just take the time, get the facility to 4. Once it's at level 4, you never have to do it again. But it's very important that you finish this up to level 4 so that you can at least break the level 70 cap on your characters so you don't end up bottlenecked later. So now that that's been covered, we are going to move on to the next thing I wanted to discuss. As far as our weekly missions, I have seen concerns on, on multiple forums regarding the Draw Gotcha 10 times mission. 
I see some people um, saying they feel like they need to like, you know, do like say like one of these first time 200 pull promos for every new gotcha that we get, just so they can like say, okay, I'll get my 10 pull weekly done and save 200 gems as opposed to having to spend 400 on something I may have already pulled on. You actually don't have to do that. Um, the ticket gotcha tickets do count, and I know for a fact we get like an ultra rare a week from logging in every day. As on top of like, I believe it's like one or two. I believe it's two from the login bonus. Well, you know what? Let's check. Yes, it's two rare tickets and then an ultra rare ticket. So that's three right there as those do count. On top of that, I have noticed on occasion that we do get like these rewards or gifts from the team. And when it's tickets, it generally comes in as like three rare tickets. So that would even be like six pulls right there, like just per week. If they do keep giving out those rare tickets, I don't see why they'd stop. They're not really like high value items. I guess they do have the chance to turn super rare and ultra rare, but that's highly uncommon that that happens. So along with those, like, like at least for this week, I know for a fact we would have gotten six tickets towards this. So even if you did have to pay with gems, it would have only been... A total of 160 as opposed to spending the 200 or even the 400 because you would have only had to make four pulls but that's another thing I want to say I do believe this counts too, the gold gotcha so in which case you wouldn't have to spend any gems if you just want to take and drop the 10k gold just to get the 10 pulls out of the way I'm like 90% positive that counts because it doesn't specify it just says draw gotcha 10 times and if we come to the gotcha screen, the, it's called a gold gotcha. So I don't see why it wouldn't count. I know the tickets count 100% because I've used them for it. As far as the gold gotcha, next week, if we have that weekly again, I will personally do a 10 pull and see if it finishes the weekly. I'm pretty sure it will because it doesn't specify which gotcha you should be pulling in, just that it should be gotcha. So the takeaway here is don't stress about the draw 10 times gotcha weekly. Because you shouldn't have to, you know, you shouldn't have to use your crystal savings, or gems rather, to proc that weekly. You should be able to just do it with the gold gotcha and the ticket gotcha with no problems. So moving on from there. Another thing I wanted to look at is this quick guide here. This more pertains to new players that may not know what's going on 100% in the game yet. There is a tutorial, it is in this tab. Like I said, you go to the top of the screen and it's going to be under this, this little light bulb with the exclamation point called Quick Guide. So you click on it and you see it just gives you general advice about characters, supports, weapons, and magatamas. Like, I know the game doesn't throw this in your face. I think if you, like, lose a mission it does. But besides that, like, I know starting the game, they don't really point you to this screen or give you too much of a tutorial. They kind of take you around the menus and then like send you on your way after they give you your free pull. So this is here for anyone who wants to review it. Like I said, it's not super in-depth, but it is just some general information for people who may not know to help them out. So, you know, make use of it. The only thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't cover facilities, which I have covered in, in videos, so that information is around. Like, you can also find information from facilities like if you go look around forums like and if you have any questions people will definitely answer them or you could refer to the videos so the information is out there as far as facilities and that little quick guide just kind of rounds out the other systems in the game so you understand the importance of them or how they work if you don't already moving on from there I do want to come to the quest screen some people were asking me what like level do you, I think they should be to be able to farm the dailies on hard mode now I want to preface this by saying if you can do the dailies and story on hard you may not be able to do the event or time attack time attack seems to be way harder than anything else on hard so I do want to point that out like if you can do the dailies you may not be able to do time attack just giving that information so from my experience, like, I don't know, like, what the community says, like, as far as this, I haven't seen many discussions, 
as far as the exact numbers or levels you should have. I think it's more gear dependent than level dependent though. Because like in Yuki Kaze's case, like I know she's pretty geared, but I was able to like play normal from level one with her because of the items she had. With her, I'm personally finding like right now she's able to do hard dailies like with relative ease. Like if I don't make a mistake, she kind of has the DPS to get through it. And she's able to also get the gym rewards as well for, you know, doing a 30 hit combo, clearing with more than 50% HP. And within the time limit as well. So she's at 34,000 gear score. If that's any like consolation. Or any sort of like help to anyone who's wondering. And she's level 43. Now in Sakura's case. She's level 64 with 49,000 gear score. I am able to do hard time attacks with her. As well as the other hard mode content in the game with like relative ease. If you're looking for something like along the lines of like how strong you need to be to do like all hard content like I am able to do it with Sakura like without you know too many problems like time attacks get a little bit you know funky but I'm sure as she'll level they'll just get easier because they're already doable. But as far as like the bare minimum I'd say somewhere between 35 and maybe 40k gear score the level can kind of be like you know tampered with like fluent like as far as Yuki's case I started doing hard with her like early 30s maybe like 33 and I've been leveling her in hard since because there's no reason to go back to normal now so levels kind of fluid as far as what it needs to be it's definitely more about your gear score or your build like as you all have seen in the build I do have kind of a life still thing going with Ryun and I'm pairing it with Yuna so it does make it a lot easier if you have like a way to vamp health from the enemies outside of the healing potions. It makes hard a lot more doable. And then as you get higher level and it becomes super trivial, then you can maybe like remove the heal from your loadout and go for something a little more DPS-y. Or a little more glass cannon-like, because then at that point it doesn't matter. So I just wanted to get that information out there. Like I said, roughly... 35 to 40k to do at least your dailies and maybe story story might get rough on the boss stages but at least the first four stages i'm pretty sure you could get through with roughly 35 to 40k we'll even say 45k if you want to be super safe and then around 50k plus to be messing around in time attacks on hard is what i would advise if anyone has you know any further information or more solid information like i said i'm just giving the info from my experiences and that I've had because I've had the question asked to me so I wanted to get the general information from what I've seen out there but if someone has like a more solid chart or spreadsheet or something with a solid this is what level and gear score you need per difficulty definitely let us know in the comments so that way people can know at what level that they are able to do something I will say this though like if you're unsure just try it like, for example, like, if I go into hard mode right now with, like, someone who obviously can't do it, like, say, my Rinko or my Asagi, and they die, there's really no detriment. Like, you don't even lose the AP. All of that is refunded. The same thing is if you, like, start a quest and quit it, you don't lose the AP you paid to start it. They only take the AP upon clear. So, if you're unsure if you can do it, just go give it a shot. Like, it doesn't hurt. All it'll waste is a few minutes, and at the worst case scenario, you'll... You'll get a game over and maybe some damage to your pride, but you'll know whether you can do the content or not, which is what the major question is. It doesn't hurt to give it a shot. So with that being said, that is really all I wanted to go over today. I know it wasn't a super informative vid. I've kind of talked a lot about the systems in the games already, as far as like how the facilities and other things work. Um, and as far as news, like I said, again, it's just very dry. I am looking, I am spending a couple hours a day looking, and I do hope to find something worthwhile to be able to give you guys information. So, I think what I'm going to do for the next couple of vids, I'm going to get a, an assist build out for the other three characters. Um, people were asking for more. It seems like the Yukikaze vid was pretty well received. So I'm going to go ahead and do one for Sakura, Asagi, and Renko next with pure assist builds. And then I'll move on to suppress builds and then protect builds. And then from there, when those things are covered, 
if we have time before Morisaki gets here, I might even experiment with, like, showing you guys mixed builds where you may not be using, like, one set type of supporter. Just to give people, you know, some ideas if they didn't, you know, notice these combos are possible. Or just to give people, like, some options or just information on what they could do or what's possible in the game. So with that being said, I am going to end today's video. As usual, if it was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. And from there, you guys have a great rest of your day. May you have good luck in your gotcha and take care.